We are VIC Fellowship, and VIC stands for Vaccine Information Coalition. You're listening to Progressive Radio Network, the most listened to, commercial free, and truth radio program in the world. My name is Renee, and the title of our show is What in the Cell is Going On? We're on every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, which can be accessed live on prn.fm or later on the front page of our vacinfo.org website. We are blessed to have Dr. Truott as our co-host today, and our guest is once again Carl Swores, the CEO of Dakota Group Nanotech in Prague, Czech Republic. Welcome, Dr. Tru and Carl. We're so excited. <laughs> Thank You're you, excited. thank you, thank you, April. Okay. Uh, <laughs> true, me, Carl. Carl, Carl meet you. <laughs> uh, over here, we're later. worn out. Uh, we are excited. Um, we have evidence surfacing every day, and it's just showing what this total nonsense is actually about. It, it, it's incredible. <laughs> well, well, good evening to you, sir. I've been. Uh, following you for quite a few years. I don't know if you knew that or not. I I had a, a full out two hour show a daily on Republic Broadcasting Network. I I, I knew very well the iconoclast uh, folks and uh, and when your book came out uh, one way ticket to Crawford, yeah. You nailed it yeah. then, you're nailing it now. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, well and let me let me let me tell you exactly how I got started into this. <laughs> Uh, I've lived in Europe for 14 years as of June 1st, 2000, this year. And I had medical and scientific people come to me like, what in the hell are COVID toes? What are, what are COVID eyes? You know, how in the hell did you get over what they did to you in 2005? In Chapter 5 of my book, what it was about was the anthrax vaccine. And it's what the anthrax vaccine was doing to our troops and the embedded uh, media people. And, you know, when I started seeing uh, doctors telling me about things, it looked more like a xenophilia than it actually looked like pneumonia. And a xenophilia is when you're, it's, uh, it's kind of a rare disorder, but it's like when you're, lung sacs are going in the wrong direction. You're not taking air in. You're putting fluid in the lungs. And when the person dies, you know, the lungs are like three or four times as heavy as they should be. And then one day I got a, I got a phone call from um, a major. I mean, she's an MD, PhD researcher. And she goes, what in the hell do they do to fix you? <laughs> I said, why do you ask? And she said, my husband and another doctor are trying to fight to save two patients. So I, I told her, and you, you have not heard what I'm getting ready to say. I said, have you ever heard of anti-IL-6 therapy? And she goes, uh, is that anti-IL-6R therapy, which is the new version? I said, well, I have the old version. I said, I was well in 72 hours. Now, what happened here in Prague is uh, they had two people. One was an Uber driver who was extremely sick, and the other one was a woman passenger. Both of them survived, but it wasn't because of vents. It's because they were both put on anti-IL-6, And that was not even an approved drug here. And then all of a sudden, everything in the Czech Republic changed. We've only had 331 deaths and 10.7 million people. And most of those deaths are not COVID. A lot of it was uh, like nurse. A lot of it was like nursing homes. Uh, people that were, you know, 70, 80, 90 years old, they had other comorbidity issues. But uh, the guy that got put on life support, the Uber driver, he survived. And the other woman, uh, she was close to being on life support. She survived, and she went home in 96 hours. But you will not hear anything out of any of these media outlets or these government outlets 
what does it take to stop this if you get it? And then the other thing we found, we've been very heavily looking into, uh, you know, like I said, I got drug into this because I, you know, I'm a survivor of an H5N1 that damn near killed me. Uh-huh. And that was, a, that was actually given to me by the CDC in Atlanta. <laughs> And uh, Carl, July how did, 2005. How did, they, how did they give it to you? Right. Can you explain uh, what was the process? In July, got it. July 2000. Well, first off, July 2005 is not exactly what you call flu season in Georgia, right? And when I got infected with this, uh, I couldn't believe how hard it hit me and how fast. My eyes were so swollen and shut, I couldn't even, you know, drag my eyes open to drive to the clinic or the hospital. And uh, then I found out, you know, once I got drug into this lawsuit issue, you know, investigating, the son of a bitch that uh, was the H5N1 weaponizing the food guy at the CDC during that period of time is guy that got fired from work, Dr. Rick Bright. Okay. I, I know. And I'm going, I and I'm, and, yeah, well, and I'm going like, oh, my God. So, yeah, we, we turned on all the RSSPs. We turned over about uh, 500 people providing uh, information to me. And what's been coming in has been nothing short of horrifying. You know, at first I thought maybe this was the um, United States couldn't win the global war on terror, so now they're going to win a global war on virus. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, that's not what it is. This is not the far well, my, my, right people. This is the far left. My specific question to you, do you have any idea how they put this virus into you? Uh, through vaccines. Okay, let me let me submit is, something else to you. I, I this did is, a, this is this is this is not this is not an airborne pathogen, and that's been proven all over Europe and all over Asia. Uh, I mean, somebody could be deathly ill from this crap right next to you, and you're not going to catch it. Yes. Now, let me let me let me give you a little bit bit of background into my work exposing this if i could let me just let me just do a little bit of uh go ahead put you okay you know during the neocon bush w bush lunacy he pegged a, a fellow that was governor of utah michael okerlin levitt to come and head up the health and human services director okay now uh, I, yep i remember i'm i'm very 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 well aware of of Mr. Levitt, and believe me, we do not like do not like each other in a very real way because I see it's all about he's he's pushing uh, eugenics. That's, uh, not, I I don't think he's smart enough to see it. I don't think he's that brilliant to see the people behind it, the the funders of you know Prescott Bush and the whole eugenics movement. He just didn't see it, and so he's promoting all this blindly, all of this. Uh, not if, but when agenda of the next major pandemic. Now, this is, goes back and, you know, all of this, all the lunacy about testing for the bird flu, remember all of that. Um, all of the migratory birds had to be examined because there was, this was what was going to bring this calamitous plague upon America was the migrating birds, okay, the bird flu. Well, was, that the, was that the 2005 that, the, that they were yeah. hiding? That, in that era, okay, and so then it went from that. Okay. To, you know, well, what the, 2005 is when they hit me in the Atlanta area, but also Novartis. Most people don't know this. Novartis out of Switzerland did the same thing in Poland. They killed 21 people. They really messed up about 150 or 60 people. They had to settle it quietly in 2014, and. The lasting, uh, what you call lingering legacy of what they did to these people, is the same healthy health issues I'm having, which is mostly skin. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, what well, what is what has happened? What what has happened to my derma layer of my body uh, since July two thousand and five? Because uh, it's like a horror story. Right. the The bottom line is this: the you know, and I I I reprinted a book that was actually published back in nineteen twenty one called "The Horrors of Vaccination," which basically conclusively proves what caused the 1918-1919 pandemic that killed so many millions of, of people worldwide and the Americas. And it goes yeah. right back to the proof. The authors of this book, which were medical researchers and medical doctors, compiled this book, presented it to President Woodrow Wilson in an official ceremony in the Rose Garden at the White House. And vaccinations took a real big hit over this book because it was conclusively proved that the typhus fever vaccine, which was promoted by the Rothschild Rockefeller cartel worldwide, was directly responsible for this death toll. Because you know, back then they didn't know. Well, that. yeah, yes, I totally agree. We're also seeing, like right now, most people have not seen this in the U.S. or Canada or even in Europe. Um, as recently as September 2019, UNICEF and the Gavi people and the Bill Gates people were over in the uh, Philippines doing their, um, their their new type of polio vaccine, which is an oral liquid. It's an attenuated virus. It's not the sulk. I, mean, I got the sulk, you know, back when I was like six or seven years old. I have a scar on my left shoulder from it. But they actually created yet another polio outbreak in the Philippines. You're not reading about this unless you dig right. in and find it. Yep. My co- my and then, you know, my well, you know, the other the other issue is like it's like all of these people on that side of this uh, lawsuit that I'm filing, they act like there's no such thing as a vaccine injury. Right. You know, they think well, they yeah. think any any bacteria, any virus, you need a vaccine for it. <clears throat> right. So fast forward then to the ni- the late 1990s. You get uh, this this group out of Fort Detrick, okay, uh, yep. led by by Dr. Taubenberger. They go to Brevik Mission, Alaska, unearth this uh, Inuit uh, woman who's in the permafrost, and they they isolate the virus there and uh, put it in the test tube, bring it back. And start the genetic sequencing, and by 2003 they have patented it. Okay, yep. so this this is what became of this is what when you start the the next the 2005 was this movement of this weaponized recreated 1918 pathogen that was caused by faulty vaccination contamination. It's an it's now exactly, but 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 also also the. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled against patents on uh, viruses and bacteria, and right. they will not they, obey the law. They don't. They go behind the behind the scenes, and this is where it, where I followed the paper trail, um, going into what the CDC, I felt in the Centers for Disease Creation, uh, Dr. Terrence Tumpe, <laughs> and this is where. Where, where yeah, Excuse me. Excuse me. Where are you from? And you call them creation. What's that? Yeah, I, I thought I thought that was a southern phrase. Centers for oh. disease creation. <laughs> or causes. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you from, from the city of Utah. We're that is that is that it. is literally that. Is, uh, I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas, originally. I've been in Europe for 14 years and 22 days. That is literally what we always called the CDC in my home state. Centers for disease creation. That's exactly what they're all about. Well, so yes. here I am following all the way through and then following what Bill Gates is up to. You know, you're in the nanotech industry. Um, for sure you understand the, the nanotech is, is a, really, a really good tool. You're obviously seeing some, some advancements in, in, in so many different <laughs> technologies. But when they start yeah, doing well, actually, it, actually, it, actually it, nanotech, it, nanotech is like nuclear energy. It can do good or it can do bad. So you have to you have to draw the line of which way which way you want to go. 
So here's these, uh, I, I've been documenting this and exposed, trying to expose it for years and years. The, the dark side of nanotech is the nanobots that are, are designed to basically do what viruses are designed to do inside the body and, and in, a, in, a, in, a, in a nefarious manner, creating like a third strand of DNA. Now, this is clearly what's been, work, been uh, part of Bill Gates and Google, uh, Raymond Kurzweil's wet dream for over a decade is to get human beings to be meshed with robotics and to the nanobot technology. This is well, the, that's, that, that, that's very, very close, but I'm going to give you a hint. Um, I want you to look on the Justium uh, as far as their patents. They're really not nanobots. Um, a lot of people don't understand how nanotechnology is formed. When you're making a nanostructure, it's usually in a vacuum system. It usually has inputs. Uh, it usually has extremely high temperatures, which, you know, they don't exist in the human body. So when you hear people talk about replication of this or that, you know, those conditions don't exist in the body. But I want you to look up this. Look up Justia. Novavax, which is in Gaithersburg, Maryland, and type in BLPS, Rick Bright. And I want you to go look at what he did after he was at CDC doing his nonsense. And this is the guy that Trump fired from Barda. You know, this is the guy that went running the Congress like... Oh, my God, it'll be the darkest winter in America's history. No, it won't be, because we're getting ready to stop them dead in their tracks. Well, I would hope this would be part of what your lawsuit is all about. I would, I would suspect it is. That, um, well, there, there's actually two, there, there's two lawsuits, and uh, I had to separate it because what I did not want to see happen is people like Comey and Holder and, you know, the other defendants in the second lawsuit tie this one up for 10 years. Uh, one of the lawsuits is uh, strictly racketeering, bioterrorism. It's also a violation of human rights, but within the United States itself, you're, you're talking about some extreme violations of constitutional rights. Yes. So that's one lawsuit. The other lawsuit, uh, I really can't talk about it because um, it involves a it involves an issue that uh, they've been doing to me ever since I was the keynote speaker at the Berlin Air Show, which was June 9, two thousand ten. Yeah, a little over ten years ago. And the United States wigged out because I was with the Russian side of Germany Russia Business Alliance. And I was also with the uh, Russian Academy of Sciences. And it's not that those people are evil because they're Russian. They're, they're, they may be some of the best scientists in the world. But the issue had to do with economics. You know, who's, who's going who's gonna to reign in certain market sectors? Uh, like right now, uh, I'm in negotiations with three different automakers for an electric engine for a car that doesn't need batteries. You know, we're, this is the technology level we're at. Uh, we also announced at the Berlin Air Show the, the fastest space uh, propulsion system that's ever been a, <laughs> ever been invented on this planet, and the United States wants control of, over all of it. The only problem is my agreements with those foreign scientists do not include the USA because they're not U.S. citizens. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's intellectual property issues. Right. Right. Well, so, yeah, uh, April Renee uh, has uh, has asked me to come on, and I I don't want it to be the dominant uh, voice here, but uh, I I have so many many questions that... uh, no, go, go, go ahead and ask. Feel free. <laughs> okay. And we can always continue next week, too, so keep your schedules open. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Carl, you're, you're no, I don't, I don't, I don't know. 
I don't know if you saw the video I did with uh, Kate uh, Shimarani out of the UK. I mean, we were talking about what's going on in the UK right now. And it's horrifying. Uh, you have the health, health ministry, you have NHS, and right in the middle of this letterhead, you have the name of a company called Ipsos Mori. And I'm like, who in the hell is that? And I looked it up, and Ipsos Mori translates, it's Latin, they die. They are coordinating, literally, they are coordinating the public opinion on the vaccine trials. They're they're getting ready to start up for uh, AstraZeneca over in the U.K., and uh, we already know Novavax, which is where Rick Bright was, they rolled out their clinical trials in Australia instead of the United States. And I'm going like, why? You know, why would you do it? Way, you know, I've always, I've always teased people I know in Perth. I said, you're not on the Earth. You're on the backside of the moon. <laughs> but they're, but they're rolling out the clinical trials. It's called Novavax, and you can look this up on clinical trials, Novavax Matrix-M. <clears throat> now, when you understand that the uh, adjuvant is a steroid, and when you dig a little deeper into what I just told you about BLPS, Rick Bright, they've been doing this stuff uh, for about the last uh, eight or nine years, these are uh, BLPS stands for virus-like particles, right. and they're drawing they're drawing components <laughs> from influenza, non-influenza, mammalian sources, and insect sources. You know, anybody want that shot into you? No, thank right. you. Well, you know what I mean. I, look, we already we already know what we're looking at in our labs. This is a nightmare. And then all of a sudden, this was about maybe two weeks later, AstraZeneca announces, oh, they cut a $750 million deal with CEPI, C-E-P-I, which is funded by Gates and the Wellcome Trust in the U.K. and the World Economic Forum. $750 million, they're, they're not there yet, $383 million was the last report I saw. But... What they're working on is, oh, these vaccines, uh, U.S. will get 300 million of these vaccines, and U.K. will get what they need for their population, and the rest of this is allocated for India. And, you know, I'm kind of like, what? You know, the rest of the world gets this bullshit that Novavax is working on? And they recently, well, Novavax recently Novavax recently bought a plant in the Czech Republic, right here in my backyard, and they're going to produce up to a billion vaccines a year, right here. But if you roll the clock back a little, let me tell you why that plant was shut down. Do you remember uh, back in uh, 2009, Baxter Laboratories shipped swine flu to 18 nations. Right. And and those 18 nations were 14 of the ones that the, the United States didn't like. And they and they what they had in it was live bird flu with the swine flu and they caused outbreaks in 18 nations. And this was as recently as uh, 2009 and the current president of Novavax you know, this Matrix M nonsense was the guy that was the head of Baxter International when that happened. And everybody just go. looks the other way, like, you know, they look the other way, like, oh, oh, my God, that didn't happen. Are you are you aware of, I'm sure, oh, I'm, you have to be aware of, of DARPA, Defense advanced research. Oh yeah. Well, listen, deep listen. Deep. When we were when we were when we were still in the U.S., we were not only DARPA level, we were TISWIG level, which is the Technical Science Working Group of the Pentagon. 
And when they wanted me to subjugate all of my team under Battel Corporation and work nothing, you know, nano weapons, genetic specific weapons, bio weapons, we told them go to hell. You know, you know, we're going to do commercial stuff. So yeah, been there, done that. What's your opinion then of of Deagle Incorporated's projections? Deagle is reporting, on my understand of of DARPA. They basically put out the prognostications. Their ten year their their ten year uh, forecast is for the population of America to be whittled down to fifty four million as of twenty twenty five. Are you aware of that report? Uh, no, I'd love to see that. <laughs> Because that fits into exactly what we're looking at, but I haven't seen that report yet. Yeah, it's a D-E-A-G-E-L. D-E-A-G-E-L is an acronym. Deagle International. They are. I've been. I've been reporting on them. Their their ten year, decade uh, forecasts have been amazingly accurate, dating back to the Eisenhower administration. They they accurately predicted the baby boom generation, the economic impacts of of consumerism, all of this, and a worldwide scope. So when I see in, in, in 2016, they come out with the shocking announcement that America's population in 2015 will be 110 million. In the last two years, they've lowered that to 54 million. Roughly 80% of America's population will be dead. Now, well, let, me, you, let, me ask you, let me ask you this question. One of the uh, fact trains we've been looking at, over in Oslo, uh, Norway, there's two entities. One is called the Global Pandemic Monitoring Board, and who's on that board is horrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, they came out with, this, with their annual report in September, and the title of it was A World at Risk. And then, like, 10 days later, they had this huge uh, global vaccine conference in Brussels. They only had 400 invited people, so we're, we're going to be finding out who in the hell they invited. But that one was talking about, oh, my God, we're facing pandemics that could kill 35 million. And then the next month, we had Event 201, Bill Gates, World Economic Forum, and John Hopkins in New York, 18th of October. And they're talking about, oh, my God, we're going to lose $35 million. And all that was was play acting. But that started the same day that the World, Econ- uh, World Military Games started in Wuhan, which actually started on the same day, New York, Wuhan, on the 18th of October. And then the next month... This was in November, and they don't say a date. You know, I've been really reading through this document. This is by the Center for uh, uh, CSIS, you know, Center for uh, Strategic and International Studies. And who was the co-chair of this was Dr. Julie Gerberding. She's now with Merck. She was the head of CDC when they hit me with that bird flu that Rick Bright and his team designed. Now, you read that document. I mean, I read it from front to finish. I said, oh, my God, this is the PNAC, and it's not about American supremacy through military supremacy. This is American supremacy through, damn, fighting viruses? You know, who dreamed this up? Right. Well, it goes back to... I mean, if you, if you follow the uh, the speeches given at uh, Davos, Switzerland, and the WEF, you see this is not just something they just thought up over a short period of time. They honestly... No, no. These elites honestly believe that the industrialized nations, uh, UK and specifically the USA, must be... You know, scaled back with their carbon emissions drastically for the planet to survive. That's their agenda, and that's the rationale for it. And people look at me and say, "Whoa, really? Uh, you really believe that?" I says, "No, I don't need to believe it. They do. Okay, the Bill Gates of the world believe it, and they really think they're going to save the planet by killing the people off and saving 
the greenhouse gas is climate change. That's the agenda. They are the gates no, no. of hell. We're, we're, the gates of yeah, hell. Renee, That's what they are. Renee, <laughs> Renee, Renee, let me tell you something that happened in 2012. I was living in Dusseldorf. I don't know if you remember this event, but they had this huge Save the World event in Rio. And who was leading the charge then was David de Rothschild. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there watching my TV. And uh, actually, I didn't live in Dusseldorf. I lived outside, uh, close to a place called Huberoth, uh, what they call the horse country. And he's sitting there talking away about this huge event and, you know, all the wonderful things they're doing to save the world. And I looked at the bottom of the screen. I could either email or call or send an SMS. And I, I looked at this. Um, I, I had a legal guardianship of a girl for 10 years. I looked at her and I said, should I respond to this? And she goes, oh, yeah, you need to respond to this. <laughs> and what I did was I sent an SMS to BBC. And I said, David, I said, it's great that you had this big, wonderful um, Kumbaya event down in Rio, but I want you to explain this simple fact. The temperature on every planet and every moon in the solar system has been elevated for the last seven years. And what in the hell do humans and human activity on this planet have to do with that? That actually made it through. The guy read it to him, and, you know, he kind of looked at the guy, and he goes, well, the, the reason that the temperatures are more elevated on Jupiter and Saturn is because they're closer to the sun than Earth. <laughs> and I, I immediately started typing another SMS. I said, thank you, David, for proving two points. You flunked the third grade, and money can't buy a brain. <laughs> And, and the second one got through, but the guy just snickered. And, you know, he said, I don't think I'm going to read this one on the air. He said, but I, I agree with it. <laughs> and, well, it, it goes right know, back to what you said earlier about the, the Lucis Trust, a.k.a. Lucifer Trust. And, and the agenda. Yeah, Lucifer is Trust, yeah. Is dead. Loser fur, we call him. Loser fur. And these are his children. Rothschilds, they're worth $1.21 quadrillion, my underground attorney naturopath informed me when I set up my faith based ministries. Um, I was like, what number is that? I mean, these are loser fur's children. And I want to make a correction from last week because I think I said the wrong uh, tab on our website of my husband, my late husband's uh, Who Are They Battle of the Bloodline presentation showing scripturally who these people are, the Jews that call themselves Jews and are not, they're the synagogue of Satan. Anyway, I think last week I said it was under our support link, which it now is. It was under, the original link was the about link. So now it's under the about link and the support link of vacinfo.org at the bottom. Okay. Just click on part one, who are they, the battle of the bloodlines, and part two, um, about maybe an hour and a half. But he shows scripturally who these people were. And what's so wonderful is being that he passed um, last year. Today's is actually would have been his 60th birthday. Um, hallelujah. What a show we're doing in honor of his 60th birthday. But anyway, um, the man was brilliant, and he has a photographic memory, and he can put scripture together. He could pretty much quote the Bible like the back of his hand. And uh, I encourage everyone to take the time to go to the about link or the support link on vacinfo.org and we'll show you scripturally who these people are we're up against and the Rothschilds, the snakes that they are. Um, exactly. They're, 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 they're going to be defeated again. Hallelujah. <laughs> but go ahead, guys. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I want to read you what I, what I have been doing today when I wasn't working. I've been working on interrogatories to two people that I never would have expected may wind up being defendants in this lawsuit. It's just, uh, it's, a, it's a marketing research company, okay? Now, uh, this is interrogatory 7172. Just listen to what I'm reading. How would you explain that during this fake pandemic, 
that created a global financial catastrophe. The wealthiest U.S. billionaires are somehow miraculously $434 billion wealthier now, even during the COVID-19 matters. Source on that is CNBC television channel in the USA. And then the last one, now listen to this one. You know, this is where you have to really test your mind on uh, what you call 3D and spatial issues. You're welcome to check the math on this matter. Assuming that the global population is really 7.8 billion humans, more or less, and the demonstration is only regarding the state of Texas, USA. 97.2% is landmass, since people cannot live in a creek, river, or lake. That equates to GIS and GPS confirmed landmass of 261,000. 231.71 231.71 square miles, which is 7.282 trillion square feet. If every human being on this planet were put in the state of Texas alone, which is only 40% of the size of Alaska, pales in comparison to, say, Africa, South America, or Russia, each person per person would have 933.624 square feet 86.73 square meters of space all to themselves for the Texas zip code for their email or their mail. Is the problem more governments that are not good at leading anything or people that have cognitive dissonance issues about reality or space or size or greedy do-gooder type people who like to dream up fake pandemics because they cannot come up with a solution either Without counting, uh, while counting their money and screwing everybody else over and trying to figure out how to kill off a lot of people. You wouldn't believe who those two land rockets are going to. Well, I would like to see that uh, be there on the fly on the wall when that's presented to them. Oh, yeah. So- <clears throat> Uh, yeah, my attorneys, uh, I, have, I have lawyers. Uh, they're already working on this. I told him, I said, I've already drafted the lawsuit. What I need you to do is go back, because under RICO, there is no test case for bioterrorism, but under RICO, to keep from getting kicked out of court on this one, first you have to prove the U.S. government's a criminal person under RICO, and I've already done that myself personally, pro se. I didn't have any help except one attorney was uh, guiding me. But the next thing you have to do is you have to spell out for each defendant the specific thing they did. Well, hell, there's 95 defendants. So what we're having to do on the list of defendants is shift them around to where under this part of RICO, this is what these people did. And under this part, this is what this group did. And this goes all the way back to the ID2020 people. I mean, what's the coincidence or what's the probability that in 2016, ID 2020 was formed, and in uh, 2020, now we have this mandate that we all have to have ID 2020? You know, what, what do you think the mathematical probabilities are? One in uh, a quadrillion? <laughs> uh, close. Yeah, it's, it's in the trillions. <laughs> Can you say scam, Demick? <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, that, that's what uh, Kate uh, Shimarani uh, over here. Uh, I did a fifty-minute interview with her in the UK. I just told her, I said, you know, a lot of people are calling this scamdemic, pandemic, blah blah blah. I said, I just call it the COVID shit show. I said, this is <laughs> awesome. this is like nothing I've ever seen in my life. I thought nine eleven was bad enough, but this one, this one took the cake. Well, I got to tell you, you know, it's uh, watching this unfold from the early stages when it was announced in November when they when the event 201 went live, right? And they announced the uh, the novel virus coming from bats in the Wuhan market. I oh, was yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and so when it when it but, uh, the first uh, patient zero was diagnosed in the state of Washington, Bill Gates is a uh, little private domain, I immediately, I immediately 
contacted the CDC and the Department of Health of, of Utah, because every state now, thanks to Governor Mike Levitt, Health and Human Services Mike Levitt, he established these epidemiologist uh, uh, centers in every state to basically take care of the upcoming pandemic that's going to happen. So this is all part of his okay. part of his net. When you, when, I, you I, finish, I, when, it, when you finish, I want to share something with you. Okay, so I, I, I asked I asked the question then, show me the gene clades. Now, I, I have enough microbiology to be dangerous. I have, a, I, have a, I have a doctorate in nutrition, and part of that is looking at virology and origins of viruses and bacteria, which viruses are created in your body. So I'm saying, listen to me very carefully. You cannot shut down anything in the state of Utah or any other state until you fulfill Koch's postulates. You've got to isolate the pathogen. And if you cannot show the gene clades, then you cannot legally declare a pandemic. Now, I even I went and was on the phone with the highest levels of CDC in Atlanta. I said, why haven't you given Utah or any other state, the epidemiologists here, the gene clades? Surely you've isolated them. Surely you've got somebody that jumped a plane and went to Wuhan and identified this novel virus, the gene clade. Because you see... When are you going to have the blood test available so you can analyze a person's blood? Let's say that you had a, a virus that you were suspected of. They would look at, you take your blood, and they would, oh, they can look in the gene clade and, and find out if you had West Nile virus or human immunosuppressant virus, HIV. These viruses are all in the gene clade, and if you can't have a blood test isolating that pathogen, you can fill Koch's postulates. And legally, you can't shut down a damn thing. Okay. Well, okay. Let me let me let me share this with you. Uh, I have as, uh, exhibits attached to this lawsuit three uh, major scientific reports that no scientific reporting site would publish. The first one was based on one thousand seven hundred ninety-five actual COVID positive test. It's a very simple one-step PCR test that can prove it in five to 15 minutes based on, um, you know, based on the degree of infection, okay? Sure, sure. And, and this person not only is a medical doctor, but also a PhD in immunology and virology. And within the text of her report, she reported that the five prime UTR is not naturally occurring. It's not possible to evolve like this in nature. She didn't say bioweapon, but she already knew that a person had come forward here in the Czech Republic and informed the government this was coming at them. And they already prepared. They changed their vaccine regimen. They double-checked, triple-checked everything. We've only had 331 people dead here in the Czech Republic out of 10.7 million. I haven't seen a person yet. And yeah, I've been here. I flew in, I flew back from Canada to here on uh, January 31st. And literally, since uh, about February 24th in Amsterdam and here on business, I haven't seen a single person sick, not one. But then I have uh, a real close friend in Bergamo, and he called me up, and he goes, these are statistics you asked for. And in Bergamo, they had the highest death rate per capita anywhere on this planet. I mean, they were hauling bodies off of military drugs. Mm -hmm. But they had 121, they had 121,000 doses of swine flu. And then they had another 21 doses of meningitis, and they had another 46,000 doses of uh, Hep B um, vaccine. And this was over five months. The average age of what died down there was 79.5 years. So what we've been doing ever since this started in Bergamo and Moan, and even here in Czech Republic, you know what we cannot find? One we person cannot that died find one that person. We no, we can't find one person that did not have the flu vaccine and got COVID. That's right. 
Yeah, that's exactly what I wrote to uh, uh, detailed series of letters to Angela Dunn, who's the city of Utah epidemiologist. I said, please, Miss Dunn, respond. And these are sent certified mail, return receipts. She has not bothered to answer me. I said, show me one death, one death in Utah that has not been vaccinated with either the trivalent or quadrivalent uh, vaccines. And, and yep. of course, she can't because they all have. That's the common denominator. Uh, then I, I, I just got back. Well, one of them, no, we, we, have, we have we have eighty two autopsies. We have eighty two autopsies. Fifty from Bergamo, twenty from Milan, twelve out of Germany. And when I read these autopsies, I'm like, oh my god. Now this is this is another interrogatory. I'm asking these. I said, are you aware that in Hamburg, twelve autopsies revealed? that in about two-thirds of the COVID-19 fiction, they did not have respiratory illness. They died of pulmonary thrombosis, i.e. blood clotting in the lungs and other parts of their bodies. And what got me drawn into this was when they're calling me up going, what are COVID eyes and COVID toes? I said, I don't know. They sent me photographs. I said, oh, I call those anthrax toes because that I've seen Back in the, right. back in two thousand three to two thousand four, when they were doing the anthrax vaccines, it was horrendous what those vaccines were doing to U.S. Uh, troops and foreign troops. They had xenophilia. They had huge spikes in amyloidosis. The average is like one in five hundred thousand. We randomly tested one hundred forty eight percent had amyloidosis. So yeah, that's a big spike. And then uh, we started looking at the fib and flip of what was, what the hell, why, why are these 18, 20, 21, 25, 30-year-old people all of a sudden having strokes, heart attacks, and pulmonary embolisms? It's because of what it's doing to their fibrin. Pulmonary thrombosis is a fibrin issue. It is not a respiratory virus issue. Right. And you, you can't well, you're find on. a doctor in the right. world who can dispute that. <clears throat> and that's also, that's we, what we're seeing over here. Now, the other, oh, here, here's another interesting issue. I have a hundred different things, and we had to extract this over VPN, literally line by line. We have another document about all the news that's being suppressed. And I'm talking about things like... Um, there was a leak of a German memorandum about how to hit the people with a shock therapy. Uh, and we know who helped them develop their shock therapy, you know, to spook the hell out of people. There's another major scientist. He is German. And he said, when I factor out everything I'm seeing in, the, in this data, and I reduced down what the real uh, excess mortality is for swine flu. He said, basically, in Germany, the COVID-19 excess mortality is approaching zero. Exactly. Yep. So, you know, then we look... Well, then then we looked one inch deeper. Where did this start? This started globally in nursing homes. And what is common for nursing homes? You have elderly people and they have mandatory flu shots because they're afraid they're going to die of pneumonia. Well, what I was going to tell you is uh, I just got back from the Navajo Reservation, Hopi Reservation. That place is, is in, in deep. They're in deep trouble. Even to this, uh, at this late of, uh, in June, there is a, a huge a number of mortality. It's approaching... Uh, it's actually worse uh, by by numbers in New York City. Uh, these Navajo and Hopi Indians are definitely dying, and they're definitely ill. There's definitely a lot of panic there. Now, when I started digging in deeper with the, the officials there, guess what happened in November and December? For the first time ever, the Bureau of Indian Affairs teamed up with the local health, tribal health departments, and paid paid the Navajo and Hopi substantial money to be injected with a quadrivalent vaccine. 
So I, I, oh, yeah. I wanted to. Who, who did this? I, I, I've. Do I've you, asked do, have, have you been able to find out who made that? I'm, I'm trying to. I, uh, they thought it might be no. Well, we, it, but it could we, be we, we know, we know who did the one that hammered the hell out of Bergamo and Milan. Yeah, if it's the same one, you know, I'd like to know. I'm trying to have them track down the circular of the of the one uh, primarily, but they're paid upwards of uh, two hundred dollars a person, which they yeah. can take down to the local trading post and turn it into to alcohol or whatever they needed. And it was just a a big party for them. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this is the name of the vaccine. It's made by Securus out of the UK. It's called Flusel Vax. And then you have the registered mark, Fluso, Bax, Tetra. And that is actually uh, cultured in canine kidney cells. This is, this is not cultured in eggs. It's cultured in canine kidney cells. It's kind of, oh, it's kind of, kind of funny you said that because uh, some of the people that came in part of the, the Crow uh, Indian reservation that came in, they were actually saying they were the dog soldiers. Of the Crow Nation. Well, um, you know, stop and think about this. If you take something out of a dog that's been vaccinated, it may have been vaccinated for canine leukemia, parvo, rabies, and distemper. And I've actually seen medical reports come across my desk where the doctor is going like, oh my God, this looks like this looks like canine distemper, but this is a human. Uh-huh. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, Carl, um, we only have a few more minutes now. And um, Dr. True and I, Dr. True is our researcher and our naturopath. I didn't get to quite introduce him to you, but, uh, and I, I haven't even really okay. formally asked him, <laughs> but I just know he is. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but that, anyway, okay. put, put, we will put, be put together in next week. I planned on being with him today, but I had a little oil leak going on in my coach. But anyway, um, if you're available, sir, True, are you okay with continuing this next week? Oh, absolutely. We need to look at uh, more on solutions because of I'm 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 excited about what you said about the Fibonacci golden mean. Believe it or not, we're on the same page with that. I've uh, and it's not my research. It came to me very uh, let's say supernaturally. I mean, it's just I don't know why I'm doing things. Sometimes it just just <laughs> go. But here, you know, my goodness, my my mentor was Dr. Linus Pauling, the Nobel Prize winner. He taught me all about mineral structures and all of that in the cell. My doctoral dissertation was mapping the, the, the 21 minerals and why they work at the cell. It's because of their, their atomic resonance signature. It's a frequency of sound, okay? And when I, when I grabbed well, all this in my dissertation, guess what? It forms a Fibonacci spiral. It's the circle of life. Yeah, uh, we 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 deal with what is called the golden mean ratio, which is one point six one eight, and that uh, that's a fractal geometry solution, and it's amazing what it does. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, matter or even uh, waves. You know, we have a one of my associates. He's got a thing called Therify. Look up Therify dot net. T h e r a p h i dot net. He's the co-inventor of that. This machine, even though we don't market it as a medical device, it's curing people with cancer, ALS, multiple sclerosis, and it's because the wavelength is tuned right. You know, awesome. And we'll talk more about that. I mean, we actually are also yeah. reversing those cellular malfunctions. That was my husband's expertise. Past shows talk about yeah. it in detail. But, Carl, thank you again for being our guest, sir. And are you going to be available next week as well? Same time, same place? Uh, same time, same place? Okay, I can do that. <laughs> Well, thank you again for your time. Get a great night's sleep. I know you're eight hours ahead of me right now. I'm in the mountain time, True, as well. And, uh, True, thank yeah, you almost, again, and we'll see almost, you tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, it's almost, it's almost 9 p.m. here, so yes. Oh, uh, boy. 
Well, it's good they only <laughs> limit us to 55 minutes on the show. <laughs> so I've got to do our closing again. But gentlemen, thank you so much for taking your time with us today. You're yeah, listening please, to Vic Fellowship, and our shows can be accessed on the front page of our vacinfo.org website on the belly of a little boy flexing his muscles. We're on every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Our contact number is 800 939 8227. If you have any questions about today's show, please call the voicemail line 862 800 6805 and leave your name, your question, and let them know it's for our What in the Cell is Going On radio show. We thank Progressive Radio Network for allowing us to give you this uncompromised truth. And yeah, bless.